everybody, welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. This is Alan and today I invented something and I'm going to show you how to make it. So if this has not been a good week for me. I, uh, I had to send my main working camera off to the hospital to have its innards fixed. Uh, I can't believe it. I've, I've had that D850 for, what, 18 months, maybe a bit longer. It's been, to, it's been back to the service place twice since I've had it for error messages they could never figure out. But um, uh, this time I know what the, the problem is. For some reason, the aperture control arm in the camera that's the mechanical connection between a, the camera and the lens. Uh, when you use the depth of field button that we've talked about before, when you press that button, that lever uh, sets the aperture of your lens to what it'll be when you take the photograph so you can get an idea of your depth of field. Also, when you take a photograph, it's that lever that shuts the aperture down to the setting you have to take the picture. And for some reason, mine will travel down properly, but it won't travel back up, um, it, not smoothly. There's something inside it gumming it up. I don't know if it's a spring or, or what. All I know for absolute certain is it's going to be expensive to fix. <laughs> I hate having to send stuff back there. But worst, worst of all, I don't have my camera, and I had a... I had a job yesterday um, trying to shoot a model um, and uh, I, I just, I almost have forgotten how to use my crop sensor cameras, which explains the quality of this video, I'm sure. But anyway, I'm over it now. But I had a brilliant invention this morning, just right out of the blue. But I was so excited about it, I thought, well, I'll show you this and that'll, that'll cheer me up. Um, let me explain what it is, what I was trying to do first. My, my photographer's bracelet thing is almost ready to launch. The shop is actually up on my website now, but I wasn't happy with some of the pictures. Um, I was using this nice piece of wood that I found. Actually, I didn't find it. I bought it. Uh, it was a sign or something, and I ripped all the sign stuff off. But I put a, I found these uh, minute pins. Well, I'll show them to you on the other camera so you can actually see them. But they're like pins, only about a third the length of normal pins. So I, I drilled a tiny hole in this board and then have this minute pin sticking up so I could put my bracelets on there and then photograph them and, and have them basically looking like they're defying gravity and sitting on the board, all good and well. Except I didn't like the amount of light the board was absorbing. And even though I was using, I used a bunch of different lighting setups, a big soft box and then a, a, another studio flash behind a big scrim uh, some backlighting, and then I used a, um, a snoot with a grid on it to to try to, I was trying to get more illumination inside and up the edges from the bottom. It just, I wasn't happy with what I was doing and reflectors weren't doing it. And then this morning I had this idea and uh, I was so excited, I immediately went ahead and made one. Let me show you what it is. This is, this is my invention. You'll recognize the materials as pieces of floor mats, but this is brilliant. Let me show you what it does before I show you how to make it. It, it is a, an adapter thing that I, I, ha I found these food containers. I don't know who eats food that shape, but I found these in a dollar store, a dollar general store or something like that for a dollar. 
and it's just these three little boxes that screw together and on the top there is a nicely opaque um, dome at the top and my idea was this I I took a little drill and drilled a very fine hole in the top of this stuck one of those midget pins through there and then epoxied it in there so it wouldn't move and then I took my thing that I'll show you how to make in a minute which, and I cut it to size so that thing snugly fits right down in there and you've all probably already guessed the punchline of where this goes into a speed light like so and then with the speed light sitting on the table with the the slave uh, you know infrared sensor or light sensor whatever it is to trigger the flash facing up so that when this thing is turned on and I take a photograph with all my other lights, I get a blast of light from underneath and it drastically changed the photographs. And uh, that, like I say, I was so excited, I thought I'd show you how to do it. It's really dead simple, but um, yeah, uh, I don't haven't come up with a name for it yet. All right, so let's get down to how you make it. It's pretty simple and straightforward, and then I'll show you some of the pictures I took with it. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I hope you can see everything fairly well. Let me, let me start by showing you what you're going to need. A flash, and I am using... I don't even know where I got this from. It's an Altura flash. It's very cheap. Uh, very, very cheap. But I, I'm using this one because when you bend it up, it actually sits to where the flash is perpendicular to the surface. So there you go. Fresh set of batteries ready to go. The next thing you're going to need is some kind of plastic dome. Now, I can't for the life of me think of anything else that comes in a packet like this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you just have to go look for it. If you live in America, go to um, either a Dollar General or a, what's the name of the other one that's got a dollar in the name? Anyway, whatever that one is, uh, just go and look around at their food containers. I bet you can find these things. Don't pay more than a dollar for it, though, because all you really need is the top piece like that. Okay, great. Uh, you're going to need... A knife with a nice I recommend a fresh blade because without a very sharp edge the edges of this thing can get messy if you have a drill like a tiny drill like this uh, I recommend using it if not you can just get a hold a pin in a pair of pliers and get it red hot and then just zap it through the top of the thing I think the drill does a better job uh, a pen. This is high tech. This um, some of my favorite glue. If you've seen any other of my uh, DIY stuff, this stuff's remarkable. If you actually use it correctly, the way it tells you to. Who would think to peel the label halfway off to see the instructions? That's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, it's called contact cement. And uh, it works brilliantly for this stuff. The last thing is something round. And, and I recommend, you're going to end up cutting it down like I did. Uh, but I recommend, so, so long as it's bigger than, than the flash. So long as the outside thing gives you half an inch to work with. And anything round that you've got that completely covers the flash is all you need. And... That's it, and the flash, because you need the flash as a template, and you'll need the lid as a template too. So, here's what we do. Now, you've seen me use this stuff before. It's, it's a floor mat. It comes in a packet of uh, 
four of them, I think. And they've got the jigsaw puzzle edges so that you can uh, stick them together and it's for you to walk around on. Oh, I would never waste one of these walking around on it. This is too good for projects. But uh, yeah, you're only gonna use, this is one quarter of one panel. I already made two of these things off the other quarter and there's a whole half a panel left over. So, so already we've spent maybe 50 cents on, on materials. And th this is all you have to do. Take your, uh, your template for the bigger circle, the thing, the thing that's gonna, where the uh, uh, device is gonna slide onto your flash. And that's what I chose. Take it and with your pen, like you can see I've already done, just position the thing somewhere on the map where you've got plenty of room, draw a circle all the way around it. Do that three times. Uh, then take your flash and straighten it up like that so it doesn't get in the way and try to position it as close to dead center as you can. I just eyeballed it. I didn't measure it. I, I looked at... Uh, I looked at how much real estate I had and, and figured that was about right. And then trace around it with the pen. Do the same on piece number two. And on piece number three, you have to switch and use the plastic dome for your inner mark. Make a circle around that. See, this is, this is whatever the opposite of rocket science is. This is it. The hardest part is doing this job well, but it, it, the, the best thing to do is make sure that you have a really sharp knife. I, I didn't do a very good job on the first few that I did, so I ended up, after I'd done them, slicing the edges off with a really sharp kitchen knife to clean it up. And I'll probably do the same here, but. So if you are gonna trim it on a, with a kitchen knife at the end, it doesn't really matter how exact you are with this. I'm just a little bit too OCD to, to not try anyway. So. You probably want me to fast forward this. So that's what I shall do. And I will get back to you when the whole thing's cut out. Let me just finish this one. Oh, you'll notice what I'm doing is I've, I've got a, a piece of black foam board, which is, uh, which is nice because the knife can go through a little bit without getting into the table. Uh, and like I say, if you leave scraggly bits like this, that will clean that up at the end. But that's not bad. So that's one down. I'll speed this thing up while I do the other two. can probably make two more of these things with the leftover plastic. All right, so with that done, we should have three discs that are pretty close in size, and these are very good. Next thing is uh, we just have to cut out the, um, the inner marks that we made. So I'll speed the tape up and then do this too. the two first pieces I'm gonna this thing is this is just cutting a circle 
I'm going to pause the video to let my phone cool down and then I'll be back. All right, so I've already done the uh, the round one too. And now's a good time to check that all of your cutouts fit properly. I have to keep remembering about this uh, pin in here. So it needs to fit snug and hold and it does so that's the right size if it didn't fit of course you will just very carefully shave a little bit more out of it that worked fine now let's check how these fit the cat as a flash there's one edge has got a bump on it make sure you get that right and then well that fits absolutely perfectly you want to put the one that fits the best uh, on the bottom um, so you don't have to force the thing on and off because the second one you don't have to push it that far you could probably do this with just one of these and the round one but I kind of liked having the extra rum that fits perfectly too there's not even a gap around it so it doesn't matter we can do either one now this is the this is the most important part this is the pro tip that uh, that you'll be glad you learned. I apparently was the only person, uh, ah, just jab myself with that again. Uh, the only person on the planet that didn't know how to use contact cement until I did one of my other projects and somebody told me I was doing it wrong. Uh, so pay attention because I'll make you a contact cement expert in the next few minutes. I think they... They stick together best, smooth to smooth, but it doesn't really make any difference because uh, they're not, com I promise, they're not coming apart. Once you glue them together, even if you do the rough to rough, it's not coming apart. But the smooth to smooth just gives a, a, a smoother uh, contact. But it, like I say, doesn't matter. So what we need to do is glue these together. And this is the, I'm going to, I'm going to glue That'll be easier to put on the flash. So I'll leave, I'll put that one on that way. And then that way. Okay, so they're the two edges I'm gonna to glue together. So you take your cement. This stuff is pretty potent smelling. So don't. Don't breathe its vapors like I am. It doesn't take much. If, if, if you do it the way I used to do it, it takes a bunch. But if you do it the way you're supposed to, you just put a thin covering. And it's best if you cover the whole thing, I've found. All right, so that's that one. Now, this is this is the pro tip. Are you ready? Have you got a, something to write this down with? Pro tip number one, let that dry. Who would ever have guessed it? I certainly didn't. What I'd do was just slap all the glue on here and then shove them together and hold them till they were glued together. And they never stay glued together very well. I wish I could remember the name of the video where I saw a, like a teenage girl showing old men how to use contact cement. It was a good video and I'd like to... I'd like to give them the credit for it, but I can't remember what it was called. Anywho. I put too much on this the first time. It really only needs glue and the high points because that's where it's going to connect. But anyway. This is boring to watch, I'm sure. I'm just being 
careful to get everything covered. Okay, that's good enough. I'll leave that to dry. You can tell when it's dry because the yellow color goes away and it just leaves a gray, shiny layer. I can, already, I can go ahead and get, even though we're gonna have to glue the other side of one of these pieces, I can get this one ready too. And I'm gonna use the smooth side. Because what's amazing is it doesn't matter how long ago you painted this stuff on, as far as I can tell. You can leave this stuff bone dry for six months and come back and glue the pieces together. Probably not, but when uh, when I saw that video, I thought, well, that's ridiculous. There's no, I was saying, stick the pieces together. You, It's never going to stick because she was just talking and talking about other stuff. And this was getting drier and drier. And then she picked them up, slapped them together and couldn't get them apart again. So... That is a more expertly painted piece because it's, it's really thin. That will dry very, very quickly. Brilliant. Okay. So all we have to, all we have to do is wait for these to dry. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes, but you can see that's still got a lot of wet spots on it. Probably the most important, well, I don't know if it's important or not, but uh, when you glue, this piece will be going onto one of these other shape pieces. Make sure that you only put the glue around this edge. You don't want glue everywhere because that'll be exposed uh, and you don't want anything else sticking to it. So that's uh, just passing the time by telling you that now this one's already ready to go well we'll do this a little bit early it's pretty dry so line them up and this is important pro tip number two if you if you're wondering what all this damage is to my hands by the way it's making those damn bracelets my i have cuts and calluses all over it's brutal especially with this very fine cord it cuts into your fingers like crazy all right so let's stick these together make sure they're oriented properly because this is the pro tip once they touch they're not moving again so you only get one crack at it. See, I just barely touched them. and <laughs> they're, they're not all the way shut, but I can't get them apart. Oh, jeez, look at that stupid angle. Okay, that's better. That was terrible, that first one. <laughs> Yep, solid as a rock. You see, this is very ugly around here. That's why I took a sharp knife and just sliced around the edges. It's still got plenty of, of room and it's very sturdy. So I wouldn't worry about this and, and just take a razor blade or a super sharp knife and trim it up at the end. Last thing we're gonna do did I put that on backwards? Oh, it doesn't matter. Last thing we do is gonna stick this onto this. So let me just put a little bit of glue on this. And then we'll be good to go. And I'll show you some of the pictures. It, it as I was as I was taking some test images with it, I immediately started thinking, what a fantastic macro tool this would be for big insects to especially beetles, things that have really colorful underparts that, uh, that are really hard to, to properly um, light, even with mirrors and, and uh, fancy 
splash equipment, but with this, you can just put your beast on the, on the pin and uh, that, make sure it's dead, um, of course, before. And then um, you get that fantastic light. I use the, the flash on a very low power, either 164th power or 1 128th power. You'll see it it's a subtle it's a subtle effect and you don't want to you don't want to have a whole lot of power coming up from underneath but um, it'll be easier to explain that when I show you the pictures so I won't wait for that to dry seeing as this other piece is completely dry but same thing just make sure you've got it situated there. There, and that is it. Now, what I'll what I'll do is I'll go into my uh, my cutting laboratory, which is my kitchen over there, and I'll um, I'll cut this down after the glue's completely dry, because otherwise the knife will not cut through bread very well. It kind of gets stuck to it. So yeah, once I once that's cleaned up, that's it. And uh, what you end up with is this. And um, did I explain about this? Uh, when you when you are preparing this, all you need to do is take a minuscule drill bit. I bought these from China, and they came in a box of about. 500 of them in different sizes and some of them are just stupidly small and they're not very good either but if you um, it's got a the handle's got a twisty part on it so you can actually hold some pressure with your palm um, and press this against the plastic and twist it like that and it will eventually catch it just gives a, a a slightly rougher hole so that I think the epoxy binds to it and then take some regular five minute epoxy mix up the hardener and the cement uh, put just one big drop uh, right on top of the pin head in there and then set it aside for a few hours to, to cure you you want it to be well and truly in a concrete block of epoxy and then um, and then that pin is not going anywhere. Uh, I imagine I could bend it if I wasn't careful, but now I can, I, I can take my artwork and the pin is tiny. It's absolutely minuscule. So it'll slide in just like that and, and it'll, it'll be virtually invisible from the front, but I tell you, it takes about 10 seconds to take the pin out in Photoshop if you need to. And then um, this, of course, just goes on the, uh, on the uh, modifier thingy. And then that part goes on the flash, just like this is just like my other flash modifier, the way it fits, like so. And it's absolutely, flat to the surface that you're on and um, let's turn it on so that uh, using this in S1 slave one mode whenever I take uh, the picture it's going to trigger this flash of a very low power and nothing happened I don't think I was on the button and then why is it not working? Oh, I'm, I'm pressing the light instead of the button. There you go. And that it doesn't look like much, but the way this thing spreads the light, it just covers the bottom part of the object in this enveloping glow. Uh, it just really works to, to light these under parts that, that weren't getting sufficiently lit. All right. So that is all there is to it. I uh, went into the kitchen and I uh, trimmed this one down 
uh, using the same technique I did for the for the main one. And here you go, we've got another one. I think this is a really, really cool way to uh, use a piece of plastic tile to make something that I think for a macro photographer could come in really, really handy. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of experimenting with it and see what I can come up with. But uh, for a for a purpose built flash modifier, I, I'm I'm super excited with this. Let me know um, if this works for you. Um, if uh, uh, if you come up with a better modification for it, please let me know. People came back after I did the the macro flash modifier with a lot of really helpful suggestions. So uh, I, I'm always excited to get those. Um, talking about the flash modifier, I am going to show you a photograph that I'm afraid is just a screen capture because um, I couldn't get it off um, the, what is it, Flickr. It was on Flickr. This amazing photograph of a jumping spider uh, was sent to me by Lekka, who is one of the viewers of this channel. And uh, she was one of the um, persons that I sent the flash modifier, the uh, diffuser box thing to. Uh, I mentioned it on a video. So I sent that over to her in the Brisbane area. Brisbane, actually, I think it's called. And um, she sent me this photograph because it was taken with that flash modifier and it made me just super excited to see. So I, I, I thought I would share that with you. OK, um, I'm not going to bother putting up any kind of uh, cutting diagram uh, for this because there really isn't one. I mean, it depends on your flash and what you've got to use as a template. If you run into any trouble making it, um, or if you can't get one of these dome things, let me know and I'll try to source the, these for you from somewhere. Uh, or I'll just go to Dollar General and I'll buy all of them and send them to you. So uh, yeah, anyway, I, I'm going to be back in a couple of days uh, with the official video I want to show you about the, the bracelet project. Um, I, uh, yeah, I need another excuse, don't I? Because I said it would be the next video. Well, I need somebody to do some, uh, some filming for me. Um, uh, she's not around. So when she gets back from holiday, then I'll finish it up and hopefully have it out by Wednesday. Um, uh, not that, uh, not that you should stay up for it or anything. Okay. Thank you very much for joining me. This one was fun. Uh, give this a try. I think it'll add a whole new dimension to your, uh, to your macro photography, at least just for, for some fun. Super easy to make. And, and like with the diffuser, if you desperately want one, but you uh, cannot get your hands on the materials or you're not allowed to use sharp knives in your, in your living situation, then just send me an email and I will make one and send it to you. I think that's it. Fantastic. I'll talk to you again in a few days. Thanks for coming by. Take care.